This is an all original 1965 Fender Mustang. No, not the strings too wise. And this, you might recognize, is the Methstang, a guitar I repaired in a full length video you may have seen. What you don't know about these, except for if you read the title of this video, I paid the same amount for both of these guitars. And I'm gonna tell you exactly how that came about. Right now, let's start with this 1965. Uh, 1965 is a much more desirable year than the Meth Stang, which is a 66, because as many people know, 1965 was the year that CBS bought Fender. And the story goes that, you know, when a corporation buys out another corporation, they tend to try to cut costs and make changes, and everyone believes that Fender guitars after 1965 are inferior, which is kind of ridiculous. That implies the last 50 years of Fenders, 60 years of Fenders, crappy compared to early 1965 and previous. Um, there may be a modicum of truth to that, but there are a lot of great guitars that came out of Fender since then and a lot of stinkers too, but so too were there stinkers prior to 1965. It all depends on how the wood ended up and how its life was over the years. This is just post corporate buyout, but I don't think they had any impact on the manufacturing yet. Okay, the story of this guitar actually starts with a completely different guitar in Portland, Oregon in 2017. I went to a sketchy Fred Meyer parking lot and met some fine gentlemen to purchase this guitar. It needed a little bit of work, the electronics were squirrely, wasn't exactly getting output when you wanted, and there was no bridge. I quickly whipped up a mahogany bridge, I was staying at my sister's house at the time and it was just a chunk of scrap wood she had so that I could play it, and I pulled apart the body and soldered the electronics and repaired them. The course is the Valco Airline branded Rezo Glass guitar, made most famous and most valuable in this era by Jack White, but J.B. Hutto is also well known for playing this guitar model, and actually this particular headstock design is the J.B. Hutto version, whereas Jack White used the white Gumby headstock version. Anyway, these guitars are worth a lot more than other Rezo Glass guitars just because of the association with Jack White and how popular he is in the guitar playing world these days. Fast forward to 2019. I have a lot of Valco guitars. I love National, Supro, Airline, all of these. They were really a creative company right back to the beginning in the 1930s. But I have a lot of their guitars and I had a different short scale Rezo glass that I actually enjoyed more than the Jack White one. And so I decided to divest of it because it just wasn't worth what it's worth to me. So I put it for sale locally and I had somebody contact me and ask if I wanted to trade it for a 1965 Fender Mustang. And I was like, hmm, as long as I can take it apart, look underneath the guard, confirm it's all original, we've got a deal. He had sent me some pictures, but when he got to my house, it was pretty immediately apparent that the guitar had been poorly repainted. But to me, it still seemed like a fair trade. I opened it up and everything else was original about the guitar. So we made the deal. Um, I ended up chemically stripping off the outer overspray and it turned out pretty good because the Olympic white hadn't really been messed with that much. Um, obviously, you know, it's battered, it's seen some ass and the stripping definitely didn't help with its aging and, or it did help because it's a very heavy relic at this point, but still. All original 1965 Fender Mustang. They are more common than the Rezo Glass Airlines, but for for my money, I think they are a better guitar. Not, you know, I like it better. 
I wanted it. I hadn't had one. I didn't have any early Fenders at the time. My earliest Fender was a 1974 Mustang bass, which was my very first electric guitar of any variety. And I will make a video about that one once I decide to refret it. There it is now. Long story short, I bought that Resoglass guitar, did a few minor repairs. I actually ended up replacing the bridge with an original equipment one after I got back to my workshop. Anyway, fixed that up, traded for this Mustang, which required a little bit of work itself. And that's the story of how I got this guitar. The Methstang, very, very different story, but it also involves Craigslist. If you've seen my meth stang video, then th this story will be a rehash to you to some extent, but uh, this guitar I saw on a buddy Kenny's Instagram account. He had found it on Craigslist in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. It had clearly been through Katrina, various other floods, God knows what else, but it is mangled and destroyed, and this is the after. This is after I've spent a very long time fixing it, put a lot of effort into this one. And yeah, I fully recommend you watch the Meth Stang video if you haven't seen it before. And you can see that whole process, but this arrived to me in much worse shape than you see now, even. And here are some pictures of what it looked like when I got it. And these are the pictures Kenny got of, off of Craigslist that first enticed me. And they were asking 1200 bucks, so this seemed unattainable. So I kept an eye on Kenny's account, and eventually there was an update that he talked the seller into a little bit more reasonable price, because 1200 USD for what the guitar was seemed a bit bonkers. Even though I thought it was badass and wanted it. Kenny got it for a very good deal, and then I asked him what he would want to sell it to me for because he was hoping to have a more faithful restoration. He wanted to do a veneer fretboard as per original, and I didn't really see the value of an original restoration on this guitar. I saw more the value of everything it had been through being just emphasized and admired the way it is. So I didn't mind modifying the neck and making a slab fretboard because the neck honestly required it. It was very rotten, dried out, lots of chip out, lots of damage. And so I, I did just that. I used Cambodian rosewood. Some people love it, some people hate it. Um, but I, I tested out ebony on it. I tested out various brown rosewoods that would be more original, but original isn't what I'm going for on this guitar at all. So uh, I went with this. I like it. It's the same colors as the guitar. I thought it worked. Take it or leave it. Obviously the guitar was in terrible condition. Some would argue it still is. Um, so it took a lot of work over many months actually. And the hardest part, which I didn't videotape, was leveling the neck to the point where it would accept a new fretboard because it was charred. This thing, uh, on top of floods, definitely appears to have uh, experienced some fires. The pickup covers are completely melted off, and so was the pick guard. And shockingly, and this is a spoiler for the Methstang video if you haven't seen it, the original pickups, the original coils, still viable, didn't die, which is crazy because I've seen mint condition fenders where the magnet slugs have corroded and that corrosion corrupts the coil wire and it's dead and you have to rewind it. But these ones, no rewind, which is shocking. But yeah, at the end of the day, the work all came together and I got this badass axe. So when I say these guitars cost me the same amount of money, I'm basing that on the original cash investment, the asking price of the guitar. In the case of the Meth Stang, it was the purchase price from Kenny. But in the case of this Mustang, it was the purchase price of the Rezoglass guitar that I got in Oregon. 
this guitar required significantly less work, is in much better shape, and is largely all original. I mean, the Methstang is all original as well, except for the fretboard, all the screws, oh, and the switches. I switched out the switches because these things barely work, even if they haven't been through a flood and a fire. These are terrible switch designs. Um, yeah, listen to that. Ugh. On this one, I should probably replace them with new as well because they're sketchy. At any rate, same initial fiscal investment, but I obviously put a lot more work into this one and had to pay for shipping for this one. So the initial financial investment was larger for the Methstang and the work I put in was several months versus just a few hours. Now I'm going to do a little bit of a shootout. I'm going to have to do just a neck pickup only test because this Mustang, the switches are so bad right now, I can't even get the bridge pickup to engage and I can barely get the neck pickup to engage. So definitely going to replace the switches on this one. I've cleaned them repeatedly. They're just crappy and old and they don't last and it was a bad design. So here is a brief Demo. <laughs> opinion right here in first person the methstang actually is sounding better perhaps it's just that the signal path in the 65 is a little too obscured with the dirty switches they are still passing through that bad connection but uh the methstang has more bite more clarity more nuance it's more dynamic uh, they both sound great they're both fun to play um, but I have two questions for you. One, which would you choose? If you could only pick one, which would you choose and keep? You don't get to flip it for its cash value. It's what you're going to keep for yourself forever. The second question is, these both cost me the same amount of money. How much money do you think that was? All the cool kids, L and S. 